Oh, it's once again that we come together in this evening ready to study the Word of God. I just want each one to prepare themselves at the table. We need father, mother, and children. If you're at work, just do like my students do. Log in on your phone and have it down low or put one earplug in. God is good. As we embark upon our study this evening, we want to, of course, thank God for allowing us to be here. Thank God for you having tuned in. We love you. We adore you. As the Lord continues to guide and lift us up, let us study his word all the more. We will be coming this evening, of course, in our study. We're in a new quarter. Please make sure that you have retrieved your Bible study lessons. If you don't have the booklet, of course, you can download the page at a time or print as you see fit. These things are always great on a Saturday sometime to just pause in your daily work, your out and about, and study of the Word of God. We are in the book of Proverbs this evening. Proverbs, our book of wisdom. So we're going to come to you. I will be coming from Proverbs chapter 3. But of course, we want to just look at a little overview of Proverbs. So let us first, let's look at our key scripture, chapter 3, starting verses 3 through 6. But we will see that the first seven verses are very key. So I'd like to just read those first seven as we look at this book of wisdom. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life, and peace will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now, I just read verses 1 through 7. Our focus scripture focuses on 3 through 6. But the book of Proverbs is one of those books in the Bible that kind of gives you a clear purpose. The purpose of this entire book of wisdom is to help impart and stress to us the need for moral discernment and discretion. The book also works to help us to develop mental clarity and perception. So we're looking at those things today or tonight as we look at our emphasis. Our emphasis in this second quarter is to preserve the unity in the kingdom. Oh, we say we are kingdom citizens. Let us preserve unity in the kingdom by looking better at how we should exercise wisdom. Our thought, kingdom citizens must know that they have a divine directive to protect and preserve the unity of the kingdom. They must see this calling as a personal uncompromising principle of kingdom restoration. Yes, key words there, kingdom restoration, preserve unity, protect, restore. As you parents think about your children, you strive to teach them, to protect them, to cover them in love, and give them wisdom so that they can operate in this world with the love of Christ leading them. So there are some things that we want to look at as we focus on what it means to trust from the heart. Trust from the heart. Now I have a few key questions for us. Question one, have you ever fallen in love and the relationship failed? 
As I work with my young people, they fall in love all the time. They get their feelings hurt all the time. The love of their life, I can't believe this, that, and the other all the time. We must minister to them during these times and prepare them before these situations hit. So the question is, as we prepare and minister to and teach those young people, because you know the book of Proverbs is really directed for the youth, but of course we adults, we mature Christians, oh, we can learn from it all the day long. Question number two, do you truly and fully trust God? So when we're ministering to our young people when they got their feelings hurt, you know, I can't believe he did this. They're just crying and, and just devastated. In all that we do to communicate with them, then we guide them to the word of God. Are we teaching them, helping them gain that discernment in trusting and relying on God? One more key question. Questions for us to ponder. Self-reflective questions. Do you acknowledge God in everything you do? Part of the situations we go through are measured by how much do we acknowledge God, seek his wisdom, seek his advice in our daily living. So let us look. The heart of our lesson today, kingdom citizens, realize the blessings of trusting God with their whole heart. What we're looking at is knowing that we can trace the hand of God in our life as we lean and depend on him. Our text is taken from the book of Proverbs where we have Solomon. Solomon wrote this book and he was considered the wisest king. The purpose of the book of Proverbs is to teach people how to attain wisdom, discipline, and a prudent life and how to do what is right, what is just, and what is fair. So we have to learn and, and look at these particular things from divine directives because the Lord has given us those directives for our daily life, for us to learn, to grow in that discernment and wisdom from the Lord. It is this purpose of the book to impart wisdom for godly living. When you assess your life, when I assess my life, because each of us should be reflective, are we living a godly life? Are we on a day-to-day -day basis seeking the Lord? The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. Here is where we will discover some of the benefits of wisdom when we look at this scripture. These first seven verses of this chapter of Proverbs, as you can read, really sets the precedence for the lesson for this week and ultimately for our life. It is our responsibility to have that genuine first for God and a responsibility for preserving unity in the kingdom. We should not seek destruction and divisiveness. We should all find and look around and see where we see God working and join him in that work. We need to experience God in our own lives. And part of that is to go deeper and deeper and deeper into his word. We've got to spend time with him. One of our first points, rather, the first point kind of speaks to that. It says, kingdom citizens know. It's a lot we're supposed to know. Y'all know this, right? It's a lot we're supposed to know. We're going to come back to that later. Kingdom citizens know that loving God mandates trusting God from the heart. We are to study his word, spend time with him, so that we've hid him in our hearts so that on a day-to-day -day basis, we understand and can do what God would have us to do. The, the word says, or our lesson says, love is the key ingredient that God has in himself. And he shares that 
love with us so that we, kingdom citizens, can give it back. The Lord created us for the purpose of praising and loving him, choosing him. He desires that we choose him all the more. God's love for us is what continues to draw us to him so that we may seek that which is really, which we really do not understand. And when I read that particular note and the few other pages right here, it says it takes the wisdom of God to understand the love of God, and that's what motivates us to love, to trust, to obey, and to honor and be faithful and to worship. To me, every relationship that we have should mimic that relationship that we have with God. If we love him, we honor him, we spend time with him, we worship and serve the Lord for the purpose of serving other people as Christ served us. One of the examples that came to my mind in, in those few words is God is love. And God would have us to love him so deeply that we cannot do wrong by other people. We don't want to do wrong. I'm the kind of person where I always think about, well, I'm not really, I don't like to um, give gifts. Y'all know Christmas and all that good stuff. I always tell people, oh, but I show you love all the time. I give you love. All my young people, they know I always say stuff that I shouldn't say, but I think this is a very important statement, and you should take it in your spirit and think about it. So think about it, and then when you see me in person, let's talk about it. One of the things I, I like to say is, people will ask you, Miss Kelly, do you like me? The answer is no, I don't like you. I don't know enough about you to determine like or dislike. You don't know most people enough about me to determine like or dislike. So the issues of life are not do you like me. The issues in the body of kingdom, in the body of Christ is love. I love all of you. As it relates to like, we could not be in any kind of likable communications. But in the body of Christ, in the spirit of Christian love, yes, I will go above and beyond the call of duty to show the love of Christ and help guide you or, or assist you in whatever need you identify for us, for me. So in that spirit of operating in love, my tendency is I will buy all the things that cause me joy and make me feel good but I bought some of those things, like when it comes to Christmas gift, I bought that with the sole purpose of blessing someone else with that gift. Years ago, I don't know, I might have been in college, I purchased the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. I like that Bible. It's an excellent study Bible. It just was like the best one I could find right then. And the more I used it, I said to myself, oh, this is for my sister. So I wrapped that Bible and I put it in a shoebox and I gifted that Bible to one of my sisters for Christmas. And that was years ago. My sister cried like a baby. That touched her heart, she loves it. And she uses it still to this day. So I knew that that was, yes, something that I was looking for and I wanted, but I realized that this was the love gift that I needed to give to her. Now, I say that because the warmth in my heart was the beauty of seeing her receive that and knowing to this day in her 50s that she still uses it. You can she would tell you don't touch her Bible. Okay? Now, I want to ask you this question. What have you done in your life that you can think of right now that you did strictly to bless someone else? It was something, a call that the Lord put on your heart, on your life for you to do. 
and you didn't do it with the intent or the expectation that you were going to get something back. But what you did get back was so much more love from God. Now, that was for somebody, and it'll flow with the rest of what I'm saying, but the Lord gave that to somebody just now. So can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I will tell you like on Zoom, click on the thumbs up, but I won't be able to see it. Hallelujah. So when you look at this paragraph where we're on point number one, it says, do your actions measure up to your attitude? What is your attitude towards Christ? Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So verse 3 says to love, that love and faithfulness are important character qualities. What is the character characteristics that you should have that demonstrate the love of Christ to other people? Do you have an attitude of gratitude? Do you demonstrate an attitude of love? Our lives are supposed to reveal whether we are truly loving and truly faithful. So that gift was a truly loving gift that I gave my sister. Too often we look at giving people things that, that, they, that they want as opposed to looking deep and exercising the love of Christ and discernment to give a person what they need. When we focus so much on the wants, we overlook the need. When we in our daily life focus so much on our wants, we stop spending so much time with Christ. We stop seeking Christ. We start making decisions on a whim or making decisions where we knew in the back of our head and in the back of our heart, we did not seek Christ's discernment in that. So we are challenged by several of the different examples in your Bible to see the love of Christ, the faithfulness explained, the trust, trustworthiness, and loyalty. There is so much going on in our daily world that we have to be disciplined. We have to really deny the flesh on a day-to-day -day basis to demonstrate where we are in understanding what it means to exercise that wisdom. Are you seeking wisdom for the decisions that you are anticipating to be made in the next few months we're about to embark upon? The summer, we're already going through difficulty with this, the educational and that kind of things that are going on, but are you seeking wisdom? What are the things that you and your household are doing to positively impact your children, your family, to understand the love of Christ. Not to complain about everything, but to be empowered in the spirit to exercise wisdom and make better choices. We need to make sure that we are showing what is God's divine wisdom and direction for our life. There are some things that we may have decide, desired to do, but now situations dictate that in this moment, that might not be the best choice. So we ask you to, to look reflectively at that. What is your individual relationship with the Lord? Point number two, kingdom citizens know trusting God adds favor to their lives. The scripture says, especially toward the children, honor thy father and thy mother that their days may be long. We have this same thing here, where you want to make sure that you are moving towards long life. When we learn to love God, to trust God, obey God, we are showing faithfulness, which causes favor to show up in our lives. The favor of God is a blessing and benefit that we can never earn, but God grants it because his grace and mercy. Okay, we're living in the time. God's grace and mercy. 
There's nothing we can do. God grants that for us. It's not that we earn it. God grants us his grace and mercy. It's something special that happens in our lives when God finds favor. What is it that's going on in your life? You the individual, you the family unit, where you understand that if we do this unified together as a family, we will have the favor of Christ. What is it that now you are doing outside of the walls of your household? Because we're supposed to go ye therefore and teach all nations. So we can't just stay in our household and think that the work of God is always going to get done. What have you, the individual, done? You, the young person, you, the middle-aged person, you, the mature person. What are some things that you can write down on your paper where you felt the urging and the presence of God over your life, you had prayed for it, and you understand or are now feeling God's favor over your life because of that particular thing. So much of what we do in the body of Christ is we've got to learn, we've got to study. So actively walking out your faith walk must include those things. Just you being a part of the Bible study conversation, participate because I know you're talking at your house, or being a part of the small group sessions is opening up within you that deeper pull to do what Christ would have you to do. To study, to show ourselves approved. The text says that you will find favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Along with what was already said about how to find favor in the sight of God, if you look at verses 1, 2, and 3, they speak to love always be faithful and remember God's teaching, God's commandments. We got to keep them in our heart. And the Bible, the Word of God tells us this stuff over and 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 over. The Bible is repetitious. And that's because you, the individual, you, the family unit, you, the body of Christ, each one of us is at different seasons in our lives where you might receive that differently in this season than you did 5, 10, 12 years ago. So as you stay connected in the body of Christ, stay connected in studying the word of God, sit still and meditate and pray. Allow the Lord to speak to you. We're praying and we're saying God is not answered because you're not sitting still to receive his word. All right? God is spirit. He's going to communicate with you in the spirit. So the repetition of the scripture shows respect to the fact that he understands you're at different seasons in life. We're at different ages or stages of spiritual maturity. So we've got to embody that. We've got to understand that to be consciously aware of that helps us to hide the word of God in our heart and to gain and grow in that discernment. As you grow, especially I tell the young people, as they grow in leadership, there are some things that they're like, but Sister Kinley, I don't want to, or I didn't want to know that. But all of that is moving you to a different level of spiritual discernment. So that is the Lord speaking to you. The Lord helping you to understand how to receive his grace and mercy and how to maneuver and act and respond to that in the body of Christ. Point number three. Now I told them when we started that this was going to be a short lesson because it was a little tricky. But most of it is self-reflective for each one of us. So the questions and the comments, you've got to kind of go to the Lord for that for yourself. But point number three says, 
Kingdom citizens know that they cannot lean on their own understanding. Think about a decision you made. You know that you didn't seek the Lord for it or about it. And it just fell apart. And in the falling apart of whatever that situation was, there was no need for you to be bitter, for you to be upset. All you could say was, mm, I, I knew I did not see Christ before I made this decision. I'm not even surprised that it fell apart. My feelings are hurt, but I can only blame myself. Can I get an amen from somebody? So when you look at that, there must be a full commitment to the total being. And what that means is commit in the spirit, your soul, and your body to the Lord that you will trust him, that I will trust him, that we will trust him. So we all, I'm sure, can think about areas of our life where we've not yet turned it over to the Lord. We might have it straight for about three or six months, and then we got stepped out of being wise and decided we could do it for ourselves or we can make a better decision. You cannot exclude the Lord in the decision-making process. We are children of God. This is us operating under his grace and his mercy. Okay? So we've got to make sure that we are obedient. As a parent, when you've told your child to do thus and such over and over, you know y'all have already went through it and you know the child understands what they're supposed to be doing. And here now, they've not done it. And now you're reprimanding them in that moment of how you feel with what you would say is the child who won't listen, okay, stop and find some humor. How do you think the Lord looks at us? tell you, I know that the Lord has great humor. Alright? When you want to put your plans together and go ahead, the Lord is laughing. Because we've got to make sure that we're trusting Him. We must not be wise in our own eyes. We should always be willing to listen to God and willing to be corrected by God. We should pray for that chastisement in the Spirit. And we've got to seek wise counsel. We do not need to be hard-headed. The scripture says that he will make our path straight by guiding and protecting us. Trust, trusting God is the best option always before our own understanding. God's way is the right way in every situation. Every situation. Every situation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. That's what we have in verse 5. And it says here that we are encouraged to not put our understanding over God's understanding. We are to seek the Lord. We are to grow in our relationship daily with him so that we understand what it means to operate with a certain sense of spiritual discernment. When your relationship with the Lord is strong, you don't need other people to be telling you what the Lord has just told you because you know what is coming from the Lord. So everyone should seek that, that emotion, should seek that sense of peace, that overwhelming covering to know that you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct your path. So we need to be seeking that discernment because that's where you're going to find and start moving into unity. We cannot live a healthy life if we're always fighting and being involved in indecisiveness. We've got to reach out We've got to extend the hand, ready for reconciliation at all times. That's the church covenant that we operate under. And some months ago, your homework assignment was to make sure that you had the church covenant in a nice frame on the wall at your house. Pause right now and look around. Is it on the wall at your house? The church covenant 
right here at Jehovah, we say we operate under that. It absolutely says that we are to be always ready for reconciliation. If we are to operate and understand what it means to be unified in the body, then we've got to understand that we must move as a team, as a body. No one person is any more important than the other. But we must all work together like the flavor in that beef stew. You got your vegetables, you got your onion, you got your meat. All right? But when we put that stew together, now that's a good meal. And we love it because we're eating what is that precious meal to add flavor. But you can taste every vegetable in there. We need to make sure that we are operating in unity in the body of Christ. And if there's an area where we're not unified or things might not be as smooth as they need to run, then let's come together. Always ready to discuss. Let's work this out. Let's seek reconciliation. If we are the lovers of God, then we need to understand that our, relation, our responsibility in the kingdom is to seek righteousness, to grow in our righteousness, to have peace in God, and to be following the Holy Spirit. We must pursue peace. Christ Jesus demonstrated this for us. We are to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. I invite each one of you to not just turn off the Bible study because this moment is over, but to go deeper into the book of Proverbs. Go deeper into your word. Even this week, if you just read the whole book of Proverbs, it's going to talk to you about what it means to obey your parents, to avoid bad company, to seek wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, what it means to be kind to others, what it means for fathers to teach and, and help your children develop wisdom, and what it means to avoid wickedness. We need to seek peace, to fight after peace, to be instrumental in providing unity in the body of Christ. Please do, in your quiet time, study. Call a friend who might also have participated in the Bible study. Go into your small group sessions and participate. What are the thoughts that you have on those first key questions? Be ready to share. If not, be ready to ask a question, seek wisdom, and ask and pray to the Lord for guidance and strength. So I'm going to leave you right here with that. Let the Lord use each one of us. This was a, a little bit tricky for me, but I'm going to continue to go back and read all of the book of Proverbs because I want to be ready for any other questions, comments, or concerns that the Lord reveals to my spirit so that I can reach out to someone else, ask for prayer, each one. We are still in the middle of our prayer time. So each evening from 6 until 7, we've got another week if I'm not mistaken. Please get them on board Monday through Friday from 6 until 7 and participate. Teach your young people. Come on and say a prayer. And listen. And always position yourself to receive a word from the Lord. I love you. I love you. I see your smiles. I saw when you raised your hand. God is with us all. Continue to stay as a family. We will look for you at this time again for Wednesday so that you too continue to study your word. Let us pray.
God bless each one of us. Lord, we thank you for this time where we have come together. Lord, we ask for your discerning power, for your chastisement in the spirit. Lord, for you to just urge our hearts to sit still and go deeper, to reflect on our lives, to look around each individual, no matter what the age. Lord, and guide us all the more deeper into your word that we are able to learn, grow, and move in intentionally seeking peace. Strengthen God and direct us throughout this week, throughout the rest of this month. Lord, as we embark upon all that you would have us to do, we love you, we adore you, we thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.